we are building a data warehouse from scratch. In the last few video of this series, we have gone through typical steps followed to create a data warehouse in any environment. In the first video, we saw how we can build a data warehouse using five step process. The first step is business requirement. You should understand why data warehouse is required. The second step is analyze the input data. Whatever the existing data any customer has, you should go through that data to understand if that data is sufficient to answer customer's request or not. If not, if there are any other sources which you can include in your data warehouse system to make it more meaningful. The third step is creating dimension modeling. We, we focus a lot on the physical data model and using that physical data model built in step three, we'll create database objects in step four. This typically includes schema, tables, and views if applicable. Once the database objects are ready, we'll create the load scripts, typically the historical load or the incremental load scripts for your staging tables or your EDW tables. In the next video, I gave you a project overview. So we are building a data warehouse for a large pizza store. There is a store manager appointed to us to help us in this project. The store manager shared four CSV files with us. We analyzed the four CSV files. The it was delimited coming with the column headers and we created a pseudo data model for the existing OLTP structure. Once the OLTP structure was clear, we created a data model for our data warehouse using that incoming files. We created two additional table, dimension date and dimension time. We also created an additional dimension table, which is dimension store. In today's video, using the dimension model we created in the earlier video, we will create staging tables and EDW tables. Once the tables are created, we'll create the load script to load the incremental or the historical data into the tables. All the SQL code I'll be using in today's video is present in a GitHub project. I'll be sharing the link of the GitHub project in the description box below. So we have DDL for EDW, DDL for staging. We have tables and schema definition in the GitHub link. So you can copy the DDL code from the GitHub link and use it for your project. Similarly, we have the SQL folder where we have EDW and staging table loading scripts present in it. I've copied the code from the GitHub location into my SQL editor. And here I'll be creating all the schema tables and I'll copying the CSV files into those schema tables. You can also refer to this GitHub link where all the code is present and copy it into an SQL editor or any individual SQL files also as per the GitHub structure. You can go to the code folder and DDL and staging and then you can click on table. Inside the table structure you will find all the DDL for four staging tables you can copy the drop and create table statement from the GitHub file and put it in your SQL editor. That's what I have done here. Similarly, you can copy the copy statement to load the CSV file into these staging tables. You can see in the GitHub folder, there are four staging tables and then there is a DDL for all the four. Similarly, you can check for the stage orders and then there is third table which is pizza types and then there is fourth table which is pizzas. So for all the four staging tables, there is a DDL available in the GitHub. Copy and put it in your SQL editor and run the commands. I already have copied all this code. Let me run the delete and copy statement for all the four staging tables now. So what I am doing here is I have four staging tables and these staging tables are truncate and load. So I'm running delete and copy for all these four staging tables, which is loading the CSV file into respective staging tables. Let me run the query and see the output. So I can see data has been loaded into all the four staging tables. The data looks good. Mind it, the data right now is, if you can see here, I'm loading only 1st January data. So all the four staging tables has data only for 1st January 2022. Once the staging table are loaded, the next step is to load EDW dimension and fact tables. So here I am creating uh, all the dimension and fact tables. You can copy the code from the GitHub path and create all the dimensions and facts. I've already created it. And for this video purpose, I'm just going through one dimension table. The dimension table is dimension orders. It is a SCD one type table. So we are deleting and inserting the record. So if any new record is coming from the source, we are deleting it. And then we are inserting all the new records coming from the 
source. We could have run update and insert also, but I think delete and insert also works fine for SCD1 tables. So I've loaded all the dimension and pack tables as part of this project. You can see I have loaded dimension order. Let me preview the data of it. So I can see there are 161 rows loaded into this dimension table. And you can see all the date belongs, all the data belongs to 1st January 2022 data. As I said, right now in the staging table, we have loaded data only for 1st January. And that's why in the dimension table, when we load it, the data belongs to only 1st January. And you can see record source belongs to shop one only. Right now we are loading data only for shop one. In future, when we'll have more stores sending us the data, this value will be shop two, shop three like that. Now let us preview the data in all the dimension and fact tables after loading for first January data. So I can see data has been loaded into all the six dimension and fact tables. Dimension date and time are static tables. So it's a one time load for them. For dimension store also, it's a static table. Right now it has just one row in it and which we have manually inserted. Now I want to load dimension orders again for second January data. So I can see this dimension order is using two staging tables, stage order and stage order details. So what I will do is I will load stage order and stage order details again, but this time I loaded it with second January data. So it's an incremental run for the staging tables. Again, it will truncate and load. So we'll delete the table. We will load the data into staging table, but it's an incremental run means that it has only data for 2nd of January. Now after loading the data, I will simply run the delete and insert again on that table. You can see here that I'm referring to the staging table when running my delete and insert. Now data is loaded into the dimension order. Let's preview the data. So I can see, I can see one first of January data right now which we loaded in the earlier run and we if i scroll down i can see data for the second of january as well which we have loaded as part of the second run so you can see right that's how the incremental run behaves in the dimension table uh, the staging tables will have data only for one day however the dimension table we keep on appending depending on the scd type what kind of scd table is that dimension table and we'll keep on adding data from staging tables into it this is it I wanted to cover as part of this video series. We have started from a scratch where we have just the input CSV file coming from the OLTP and we built a data warehouse for it. I have not done a dive deep into all the DML files created as part of loading of dimension and fact tables. But if you want, I can cover that also in a subsequent series. The code for all the entire project is available in the GitHub project. I will share the link in the description box below. If you have any comments or feedback for this video series, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll take care of that in my future videos. Thanks. Hope this helps in understanding how we implement data warehouse from scratch.